Man, after the past couple of days with Ravens practices, it wasn't looking too good for both Zay Flowers and Marlon Humphrey, but we got a positive update on one of them. The other one, uh, not so much. So let's get straight into it. Before we do, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn them notifications on. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. Thank y'all for everything that y'all do. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for always coming through. And thank you, most importantly, for making this so much fun. I love y'all comments. I love just everything about y'all, man, straight up. So thank you. Now, Zay Flowers who had missed the past couple of days in practice. And even in the game on Monday night, he left for a little while, but he came back and finished the game. So it was like, okay, but then he missed practice. It was like, ooh, okay. But he missed yesterday. He missed the day before yesterday. But today, get this, he not only returned, but let's read the report from Jameson Henson. He said, Ravens wide receiver Zay Flowers returned to the practice field on Friday after missing the previous two days. Not only that, but... Flowers ran out onto the field and was even dancing off to the side before the start of practice. So Zay, he was really feeling good. So I guess these past couple of days that Zay Flowers has been out, he been resting, he been chilling. Ravens been like, look, Zay, we know you know the playbook. We know you got connection with Lamar. We know you good at just about everything that you do. Zay, just chill out, rest that ankle. Because like we said in yesterday's video, we need Zay Flowers' ankle to be ready because he needs his ankle to take other people's ankles. So Zay Flowers, just chill out. Friday, you, you should be good by then. So this is just great for the Baltimore Ravens. It says, it looks like he'll be ready for Sunday's game uh, at the Browns. So that's good. That's great. And, and we love, 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 love to hear that, especially for this Baltimore Ravens offense, especially just how they've been clicking, especially how Zay Flowers been a big part of that, especially how Rashad Bateman been a big part of that too. And, and this, again, this is why the conversation though still. The scale was eight flowers. This is why there's still been conversation about should the Baltimore Ravens trade for a wide receiver. But we're going to get into that a little later. Anyway, um, in not so great news, but not surprising, because while Zay Flowers in that Monday Night Football game, he left, but then he came back. Marlon Humphrey left, but he never returned. Uh, so they said Marlon Humphrey was not practicing, but he was on the side field working out. So it ain't looking good for Marlon Humphrey this game. So... Uh, Nate Wiggins, Brandon Stevens, Arthur Millette, Ardarius Washington, whole secondary. It's, this will be a perfect time to have a get-right game. Confidence boost game. Uh, Baltimore Ravens, they could use it bigger than ever right now. He said also not practicing uh, running back Rasheen Ali and cornerback TJ Tampa. He's dealing with an ankle injury as well. So uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they get Zay back. Marlon Humphrey most likely going to be out. But Ravens should still overall be in some pretty good shape injury-wise. Now, speaking of injury, um, Chris Godwin, who is an amazing receiver, what him and Mike Evans do over there in Tampa Bay uh, is great. Then they benefit off of each other. So the Baltimore Ravens, of course, played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week on Monday Night Football. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens got a win, but the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they lost a lot more than the game. They lost Mike Evans uh, for the next three to four weeks. Um, but they lost Chris Godwin uh, probably for the season. But the play where Chris Godwin um, got where well, his season was over, uh, it came on a tackle from Roquan Smith. And the NFL, they are saying it was a hip drop tackle. And I remember watching it live. I didn't see hip drop tackle, but the NFL deemed it to be a hip drop tackle. And let's read this report from Ian Rappaport. He said, uh, Ravens linebacker Roquan Smith was fined a little over $16,000 for what the NFL determined to be a hip drop tackle that resulted in a dislocated ankle for the Bucks wide receiver Chris Godwin, who was placed on injured reserve. Um, so Roquan Smith going to lose a little bit of money uh, for that hip drop tackle. Uh, but... Also, with Roquan Smith, uh, this is going to put a lot more eyes uh, on him from the NFL officiating crew. Uh, so you got to be careful. Now, when I watched it, again, I, I didn't think it was a hip drop tackle, but maybe I just don't know what a hip drop tackle is. I know um, there was somebody that said, oh, from a different angle, from the end zone angle, uh, then it, it, it actually is a hip drop tackle. So maybe I just got to see that. But from what I saw, it did not look like a hip drop tackle to me because I thought a hip drop tackle is when you wrap up the ball carrier, and you literally drop your hips. So you drop all your weight down to bring them down to the ground. That's what I thought a hip drop tackle was. Um, and to me, it didn't look like that. But again, maybe I just didn't see something. But with the hip drop tackles, it's, it's so tricky. And I know J.J. Watt even talked about it. He said um, the refs, they can't even get these, uh, these, these calls right in real time like we saw uh, at the end of the game last night, the Rams and the Vikings game, where Sam Donald was in the end zone and then he got tackled by his face mask. Should have been a 15-yard penalty. Uh, first down, but it was a safety, and 
a, a blown call that ended the game. It, it, it literally ended the game. Um, so that was it, was, it was unfortunate. But J.J. Watt talked about how the refs, they get these calls wrong, but you expect them to get the hip drop tackles right. So it's very, very tricky. Speaking of this Cleveland Browns and Baltimore Ravens game coming up in a couple of days, let's hear from the best Browns creator in the business, my guy, Quincy Carey, and how he feels this game is going to go. So let's talk about Browns versus Ravens. I think this is one that a lot of people are going to take a quick glance at and say to themselves, the Browns have no shot. The Ravens are playing such good football, and it's going to be easy to predict a large margin of victory here for the Baltimore Ravens. I just don't know if it's going to be that simple. Um, the Ravens are coming off of a electric five weeks of football culminating with a beatdown of what is a decent to good Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. So I imagine that the confidence in Baltimore right now and in the fan base is sky high. Meanwhile, you look at the Cleveland Browns and they look like or at least appear to on the surface to be limping into this contest, playing some of the worst football that they've played in the last five years. And that perception is kind of true. The Browns aren't playing good football right now by any metric, but they are playing better football than they did to start the season. I also think the Browns switching quarterbacks going to have a tangible difference on the offense. Um, I think a large part of the problem for the Browns was simply that their quarterback was not seeing stuff or willing to take stuff downfield and not willing to throw in the intermediate area of the field. Jameis Winston will do that, right? And I think that's going to be something that's going to be beneficial to this team. I think people are going to look at this game and think to themselves, this is either going to be a low-scoring game like Browns and Ravens normally is, or it's going to be a blowout in favor of the Baltimore Ravens. I actually think this is going to be a shootout. Both defenses have had issues with the big play. And Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry are going to get big plays, at least in the run game versus this Cleveland Browns defense. In the secondary, I don't know if that's going to happen. Denzel Ward and is playing some of the best football of his life. Maybe this is a game where JOK really does show up and kind of put Lamar and keep him boxed into the pocket if they spy him. Um, that could be something that happens, but I don't think it will. I think Lamar is going to be able to have success on the ground. And I think Derrick Henry will have one of those games where he gets shut down for like three quarters and then pops off a 60-yarder at the end. Um, so I think this game is going to be a lot more high scoring than a lot of people assume. Um, I think this game is going to be – a lot more exciting than people assume. I think there's going to be a, a couple of interceptions in this one on both sides. I think Lamar is going to throw a couple. I think that the Browns are going to throw a couple here. This thing's going to ping pong back and forth. I think you're going to see plenty of big plays. I think this is going to be an exciting iteration of the Browns and um, Ravens rivalry. So that's what I'm looking forward to this week here. Because I think if you just look at the matchups here defensively, the Browns secondary should match up really well against a Ravens secondary. And even like JOK has been playing really good football. Grant Delpit's been playing good football. So I don't expect tight ends to be much of a problem for this Cleveland Browns defense. I just think they're going to give up those big gap plays in the run game and in the middle of the field. And you're going to be able to get Greg Newsom running left to right. And that's going to get you a couple chunk plays here and there. And I think the same thing is going to happen on the other side of the ball. I expect this game to be close. But oddly enough, I think this is going to be high scoring. And that's saying a lot from a team that has not scored over 20 points this season. But I really do think that um, a, a change in offensive play caller might help. But I really think the big change is going to be the change in quarterback here for the Cleveland Browns. So that's my thoughts on it. Y'all let me know what you think. Peace. Now we hear my favorite part of these videos where we get to feature your question. If you would like to be part of it for the Team Keep It Clean patrons, and if you would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. Now, we got to give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean patrons, my guy, Jason G, and also G. 
I wonder if that was a mistake if he accidentally became a patron twice. But I, I don't think so. But I appreciate the both of y'all. Thank y'all for becoming Team Keep It Clean patrons. Uh, and if you would like to ever send in a question, just send it directly on Patreon. For everybody else, you can send your questions to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Without any further ado, let's get into these questions. First question came from a Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Martin. He said, what if the Ravens offer the conditional first if the, they make the Super Bowl with a conditional third for Legereus, Legereus, Legereus Sneed? Uh, the guy that helped end our season last year could help us win the Super Bowl. Uh, also, I saw someone was mad. I said, I like our guys in the wide receiver room, and they wanted to get physically violent just because they hated that I was content. I'm not content. I just like the wide receivers we have and would rather use our resources to get that guy at cornerback position. I, I don't trash the people who keep asking for a standout wide receiver i just want this team to win no matter what it takes period whether that's a wide receiver addition or not you can disagree with me but why does that mean you have to boil with anger uh, and want to get violent about it yeah that's not that, that's not what we do over here can't keep it clean that, that, if somebody did that over here that no we we not about that man that's not what it's about if we if we disagree cool disagree and move on don't disagree and get all personal no that's no that's not cool at all um, now for the first part of a first round pick, a conditional first round pick, Raven make a Super Bowl. Um, so you mean a conditional third round pick that turns into a first for Lager for Legereus Need? No, mm, no, 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 thanks. Um, I get what you said, but that all the, like, if leave it, leave it a third if it's a third, a first round? Mm, no, I, I wouldn't. Not for that. Um, but as he also said, uh. Oh, before I, I forget, I really like the little scoreboard thing in the background. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, appreciate it, man. Thank you very, very much. I, I do. I like it, too. I like it, too. It's a nice little addition, nice little reminder of what's going on around the league and what's happening and whatnot. But back to the uh, the, the, the previous uh, question, um, as far as you like the guys in the wide receiver room, yeah, they're they doing a great job. They're doing a great job. But again, remember... I, I, I know y'all tired of hearing me say this, but remember last year, Ravens were doing a great job running the ball, and they still got Derrick Henry. So with the wide receivers, they're doing a great job, but it don't hurt to add even more. Wait time. Next question came from my guy, Chaz. He said, if Zay can't play this week, well, hey, look, look, he can play. Even though he, he sent this question early this morning, but Zay is good to go, which is great. But he was ready for Dayton. Wait, he said uh, if Zay couldn't, couldn't have played this week, so I got to change, rephrase his question a bit, uh, and his ankle injury lingers into next week, we should rest him and bring up Day and Wade from the practice squad. Now, I mean, they still got that option to do that. Uh, if Zay ain't 100, if they feel like Zay, maybe not, but they still would have the option to do that, but I don't think that they would. Uh, he said he showed potential and promise in the preseason. I believe he will step up, and the offense wouldn't miss a beat. Hope you and the family are well. Back to study, and I go. I'm out. Hashtag Twitter message. Hashtag, no, nah, coach, you did that, LOL. Shout out to Zay Flowers, by the way, for being back. Um, they and Wade, think about this. Even if he got called up, they wouldn't throw him in the starting lineup like that. They wouldn't have him be a replacement for Zay Flowers. If Zay were to have been out, which we're glad that he isn't, then it would have been Nelson Aguilar time. Nelson Aguilar would have got more time. Tylen Wallace would have got more time. Tez Walker, uh, probably not. Um, but those guys would have got more time. Dayton Wade, even if they did call him up, he would be way, way, way on the back end of the depth chart. Next question came from my guy Brent. He said, uh, I'm a big Ravens fan. I got one question. Should the Ravens sign a free agent like a Randall Cobb? No. Like a Chase Claypool? Nah. Or Michael Thomas? I wouldn't mind if they sign him but to the practice squad. Sign him to the practice squad. Because that will give you an experienced wide receiver who you know he could be a baller. He just he, He's had a lot of injury issues. But he would be a, a safe signing. It wouldn't be game changing or anything like that, but he would give you somebody that you know has been there, done that. If he's healthy. You can sign him to the practice squad, but I wouldn't put him on the active roster. I don't think it would be – I don't want to say it wouldn't be worth it right now, but it just – it wouldn't be wise that the Ravens to sign him to the active roster to take up a roster spot um, when there's a lot of unknown. So I would sign him to the practice squad, let him be there, see what he does, and if it works out, great. But if it doesn't, then well, you know the rest of the story. Anyway, he also said uh, – or um, – or he said sign one of those guys to have depth at the wide receiver room when someone gets hurt. Uh, or a safety like a Micah Hyde to help in the secondary. Oh, man, <laughs> that would not hurt at all as far as Micah Hyde is. Because I saw something the other day. I, I, I saw something the other day that said um, Michael my, – not Michael Thomas. Man, you got me saying Michael Thomas. I guess I'm thinking of these old Saints players. Marcus Williams said he was the 75th out of 78 ranked safety, and Eddie Jackson was the 78th out of 78 ranked safety. So he was at the, all the way at the bottom. Um, Marcus Williams was at the, the third from the bottom. Now, I don't know if those numbers are accurate or not, but I do remember on Sunday Night Football, remember um, when they showed a little graphic of whatever position you play and where you ranked in that position and Marcus Williams was 75 out of 75 or 78 out of 78? That don't mean 100%. 
No, that that means that he was ranked at the bottom. And I know sometimes the rankings they can get a little miscued, but when you look when you take the eye test with Marcus Williams and, and just Ravens safeties, it's, it's been rough. It's been or the drop back safeties, the traditional safeties, not Kyle Hamilton, because he's ranked really high. Um, but anyway, uh, but I, I don't even think it's necessarily them though. I don't think it's the players. I think it's the scheme still. The, the scheme something's got to give with that. And this is a nice bounce. This could be a nice bounce back game for Zach Orr. So please let it be that. Next question came from my guy ABTM. He said, "Darren Graven, uh, I would like to deeply congratulate you on your marriage, your family, and all your success. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, man." He said, though in a better place today, eight years ago, I was 21 years old, sleeping on a train in New York, using my weekly ticket to avoid transit police. Uh, I was working 15 hour days between two jobs, skipping meals and saving every cent to have my own place. All I kept was a duffel bag of work uniforms, toiletries, my savings and a work phone. To escape, I remember endlessly searching uh, Baltimore Ravens on YouTube, trying to find new content beyond the occasional ESPN panelist mention, uh, which was completely non-existent until I came across a man who believed in something, executed it exceptionally, truly cared about people, didn't care that there wasn't a crowd, uh, believed in himself, made me laugh, and feel like I had something to look forward to. Like I had a friend and a Ravens news source. Uh, that night, I actually took my first step into technology, technological literacy and signed into YouTube for the first time specifically to subscribe. Uh, over eight years, I estimate 20 YouTube, 20 YouTube accounts. I don't remember my login for <laughs> and 20 subscriptions to your channel at this point. LOL. Eight years later, uh, you built a career, a studio, new score, <laughs> new scoreboard is fire. Welcoming community that oozes <clears throat> with endless humor. In the comment section, positivity and real camaraderie. <sighs> Your content has transcended the Ravens and football completely uh, in the past four years. Oh, man. In the past four years, uh, my daughter tragically passed away. I received third degree burns and I'm battling in workers' comp court to receive compensation and going through treatment. Uh, these traumatic life events led me to therapy which indirectly brought me to compose this email and signing up on Patreon. I feel more comfortable with myself reaching out to speak for the first time in this community that has meant so much to me and been there for me through everything. I only felt right, and I hope it helps somebody and can be shared the way you all helped me. Uh, you are all important, and you all matter. Mm. So thank you from the bottom of my heart, Engraven, for what you do. Uh, it's bigger than the Ravens. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's bigger than the Ravens. It's bigger than football. Love you all, team. Keep it clean, fam. <laughs> and just like when Derrick Henry had a chance to leave the Titans <laughs> for the Ravens, I'm out. And I appreciate this, man. I appreciate this a lot. Um, that's real right there. I, I I appreciate it. I'm I'm happy for you that you in a a much better place um than you were in before. Um, appreciate you sharing this. Um, cause you you've been through a lot, uh, a whole lot. Uh, but you ain't give up. You ain't quitting. You just kept going. Uh, and that's important with anything. Uh, but especially with everything that you talked about that you've been through. And, and I'm sure um, you're probably leaving a lot of stuff out, too. Uh, but I, I appreciate this a lot, man. I really do, man. This. You're special, man. You're a special person. And I, I appreciate you sharing this. Um, I appreciate it a lot, man. I don't even know what, what else to say, man. Because you, you said a lot, man. Um, and that's that's what this is for. Uh, that's what this channel was for. Um, and but this like hearing stuff like this, uh, y'all help me out a lot. Y'all y'all really do. Um, y'all are very inspirational to me. Um, I appreciate how y'all are very personable. Um. Just y'all are great Y'all are great people um, and, and thank you for everything that y'all do Thank you for sharing that message um, With not only me but with, with all of us 
uh, because it was, it was it was really really nice to hear, especially everything that you've made it through and everything that you're continuing uh, to make it through.